What is up, guys? Welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to show you how to prep your cup from stainless steel to get it exactly the way it needs to be for you to not have any problems with your resining, epoxying, art working stuff that you do. You know, first thing you're going to want to do is take all these sticker thingies off. And there's one on the bottom on a lot of them. So, and we're doing a coffee mug today. Gosh, that one's on there really good. There's some sticky stuff on there. I have to <laughs> have to get that off. Maybe without chalkboarding myself to death. Oh my gosh. That kills my ears. I can't do that. No. So we're going to prep this bad boy in this video just to show you the complete way to get it to a nice purdy white base that you can start whatever you're doing on. If you want to see what I turn this into, well, you'll just have to check out the next video. Okay? Okay, cool. Yeah. That's why we use stainless steel. It's really durable, really tough stuff. So, uh, let's get going. All right, so you remove your lid. The first thing you're gonna wanna do, gonna wanna, gotta have a 220. 220 grit sandpaper. Scuff this bad boy up all over like be pretty aggressive. Don't forget the bottom. Don't forget the all the intricate parts every single Spot some spots are really hard to get look. You see how it's scratching I don't know how that sounds to you, but you want it to get it as dull looking see the difference shiny Dull go this way Go this way, go two different directions to make sure you cover all your areas. And the real crack areas, you gotta pay attention to those two. You're gonna need a scotch bright pad. Wow, did you hear that thunder? Sheesh. They make them in green, gray, they have different grits. This is the one I have, so that's what I'm gonna use. So, there we go. Another good tip is little areas, tear you off, tear you off, hustle, hustle. tear off, like a little corner piece. That way you can get in all these little areas. As you sand, you're gonna really need to wear gloves, but I wanted to show you this. Look at the stainless steel that gets your hands dirty, metal, and it smells like metal, irony, weird smelling. But as you sand, you wanna put gloves on because the oils in your hands will react and not allow your paint to stick you have bad spots, so you don't want that. You want to use clean hands, but I wanted to show you that on my hands. Isn't that, oh, even my ring, jeez. Also, make sure you get, see the difference where these raised areas, where it didn't sand, you you need to make sure you get all that covered really well so you'd have good adhesion. So, just keep sanding. One eternity later. All right, we're done sanding. You can see how scratched up and liney it is. Liney? Is liney even a word? Non-sanded and sanded. Huge visual difference. That's what you need. Next step is to go take this to the sink and wash it with some soap and water. Then we're gonna spray it with some alcohol ink to dry up the water. Not alcohol ink, just regular alcohol in a spray bottle. I just like to do that, 91%. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. And to get off any extra fingerprints or grease, grease or grime or anything that might be on this thing, I don't know. All right, now we got a cup washed and cleaned and wiped down with rubbing alcohol, it's dry. The next thing I like to do, it's not absolutely necessary, like you can clean it at the end, but I like to tape up my rim and I'll show you how I do that just just get the tape lined up where you want it and just go like huh. sometimes it gets stuck you just gotta finish it off but what you have there is really just a, a little precaution for when you spray this step you won't have to clean all this junk out later and then I'm gonna shove it in this football and hold it so we can spray it the technique that you use is exactly the same as this right here where I spray the clear. Same techniques, same step.
steps that you take. Follow through all the way. Don't get too close. Don't run it. I'm using this etching primer right here by Rust-Oleum because I'll be using a Rust-Oleum uh, flat white to use my base coat. All this stuff is in the link in the description to get exactly what I'm using if you guys like to do that. So just take a look below and while you're down there, like and subscribe to this video. Thanks. Okay, coat number one is done and you can see I just barely misted it to give it uh, something to grab onto for my next coats. Coat number one is, you can still see the metal through it. That's really all you're looking to do at this point with each step, each coat doing pretty much the same. Two, maybe three coats like this and that's all you need. Coat number two should look like this. You can still see through it a little bit. Three coats, we should be just enough. That would be perfect to give us and I'll come back and show you. These really only have to dry with this etching primer about two to five minutes in between coats. Of course, depending on the weather and if you're not using what I'm using, just read the directions. Follow them. That's what they're there for, man. Or woman, people, people. All right, now at this time, you should have a nice, smooth finish. Look at that. Isn't that so beautiful? The next step is going to be to do the white. Flat white, 2X rust stolen, and let's go. And there you have it. Congratulations. You have a beautiful, perfectly prepped, blank white canvas ready for your creative genius to go on. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is only two coats of the white. You can put more if you want, but I'm going to be putting something over this. And if you want to find out what that is, stay tuned to the next video. And at the end of the next video, it's amazing. It's going to be a crazy surprise that I've never done before. You've never seen. And it's just, I don't know. It's just mind-blowing. You just have to watch. Okay? Just wait and see. Okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>